Hello and welcome to Renfrewshire Libraries in conversation with Matt Oldfield. Hi Matt. Hello. We've switched extra time and we're going to focus on the writing of Matt's Football Heroes books. Let's kick off. Matt, could you talk us through how you put pen to paper on the books? Absolutely, yeah. I feel I feel a bit weird about talking about writing because I think writing is such a a personal thing. I think it, it so much depends on what you're like as a person. But what I'll, I'll talk about is, is what I do. Um, so I know that a lot of people like to kind of just go for it when it comes to writing. So some people, you know, make very few notes and then just, you know, free flowing text. Mm. But um, personally, for me, I, I like to have my my information first. So so because I, I think once I if I can plan and structure my chapters nicely, then it allows things to flow a lot easier. And I, I kind of save myself a bit of time, basically, um, because I've kind of got an idea of where I'm going um, in, that, in that chapter. And that's how I write these books. So as, as I was saying on the previous video about planning um, and research, like I'll have an idea of where these 23 chapters that make up most of these books and um, where they're going. And so, what I would normally do is try and write them one by one. So rather than just free flowing chapter after chapter, I would break them down into just manageable chunks. So, you know, I'd sit down in the morning and I think, right, OK, today I'm going to write chapter three of this book and I'd get to the end of that chapter and then I would move on. Um, and that's and, and so what I'm doing is kind of I, I don't leave too long between each of these chapters because I want there to be a kind of flow between the chapters. but I do like to feel like one is done before I then move on to the next. Um, but talking about editing, because I know that drafting and redrafting is such an important thing. And for a lot of people, it's very boring. But for me, it's it's a really important, but B, like I actually really enjoy it because what I'll do is say so that each chapter I write, I will. I, I guess I'm quite a perfectionist, so so I, I often end up kind of, you know, I could sit working on a few sentences for, for a good half an hour, um, but I, I would normally be working through it as I go, making corrections, making corrections. But then once I get to the end of a chapter, then I would definitely read through it again and see if I can make it as good as I can before then saying, OK, for now, that's that'll do. And I'll move on to the next chapter and next chapter and next chapter and, and do that in the same way. But then obviously once I've got all 23 chapters done in that way, I then need to read through it all together because I need it to all fit together. But I also want um, with these books, the kind of the story element is really important. So I want to make sure that, you know, the sense of kind of any setbacks that they suffer, this kind of character, what they're like as people, I want that to be reflected throughout the story rather than just suddenly appearing at mm -hmm. a certain point. So, you know, if they're a very kind of shy but strong character, then I want that to show throughout the book rather than just at one point. Um, so I'll, I'll make sure that you can kind of chart that journey within the book as well so that it all really flows through. And um, so that's the kind of second round of of drafting that I would do on on all of my books and and that it's really helpful I find to to really read through and also to read aloud as well I'd really recommend that to anyone and um, because you get a much more of a a sense of because you know as soon as you start tripping over words you, you you think okay well no that's not right though you know let's change that up so that I find that a really helpful way of um of you know making the edits um, but yeah, that's basically how how I would write a book, and I think it, I really do think it helps to break things down into manageable chunks. That's my personal preference, just because I think sometimes the idea of writing kind of you know one of these books is about twenty three thousand words. So I mean that and that that sounds like a lot, but once you break it down into twenty three lots of one thousand, suddenly you know yeah. that doesn't actually sound too bad. Um, uh, especially for me, it may, you know, I sort of calm down and don't feel so, so, so worried. Um, and so that's, yeah, that's how I go about doing it. And obviously within each of the chapters, you also need that. So as I was saying about the kind of development, so, you know, their rise and falls and, you know, their journey, mm -hmm. you also want a bit of that in each chapter. So you want to make sure that there's a bit of drama, you want to, you know, excitement rather than it just being, um, and also a mix of things. So you want to have, 
um, some scenes that are very much, some chapters that are very much about the player, but some that are kind of expose other characters in his life. So you want to make sure that you have kind of family, friends, that kind of stuff. Yeah, you want a good mix of, of, of chapters. Fabulous. Thanks so much, Matt. Uh, thanks so much, Matt, for uh, an insight into the writing process. Now, in all of the stories, you write in a conversational style, a dialogue. So I was just interested. Uh, could you give us an insight into this approach and style? Yeah, so um, this was one of the, so when we first started writing the um, Ultimate Football Hero series, one of the things that we wanted to do was sort of take the kind of football biography, which is obviously, you know, a really popular kind of writing, and make it a bit more kind of child friendly and a bit more exciting, which meant that we wanted to focus more on the stories and a little bit less on the facts and those stories we wanted to tell in a way that I guess is a bit more like fiction in general so we wanted to really throw in description um, and uh, characters and we wanted to therefore also have dialogue because I think dialogue and speech is it's a really um, it's a really important part of fiction but it's also an important part of literature in general I think because it it makes everything a bit more engaging I think you can really you know you can hear their voices it helps develop the characters a bit more and they become yeah they become less like a sort of distant yes. figure and a bit more relatable um to to readers so yeah we try and make sure that we get lots of um conversation in now obviously we weren't there when um when you know Virgil van Dyke was five years old or you know <laughs> Mbappe won the World Cup so <laughs> we have to be a little bit careful um in in what we're saying you know nothing we try and make sure that the the dialogue is it kind of it's useful to the plot um mm -hmm. but it's also you know something that might possibly be said um and not too controversial obviously um so it's a kind of yeah we have to be a little bit careful with what we say but in general we try and stick to very um you know, common phrases, very, and, and very positive messages as well. So, you know, the truth might be that, you know, when, uh, you know, some swear words were being thrown around when something happened, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll try and keep things a little uh, more child friendly um, within the books. But we really feel that that speech is really important to, um, for making it just that bit more fun. Um, and so that they're learning about the footballers but also you know they're enjoying what they're reading as well which I think is a really important double and as you say it's an, it's an insight into the character as well the personality yeah. Or, uh, themselves yeah and we try and make sure that each of them does feel a little bit different because I think you know obviously a lot of footballers have very similar characteristics you know they're all very determined they're all very dedicated but we, we try and make sure that we find different aspects about each of them so that we can we can really explore that and and so that you know if someone's reading the whole of the ultimate football hero series they're not just reading you know the same footballer 20 times um yeah fabulous well thank you so much matt now we're in injury time and extra time so matt prior to the final whistle have you get any three top tips on the writing process absolutely uh, okay number one and um, definitely write about what you love um, is is such an important thing um, you know there's a reason why I write about football and that's because it's the thing that I'm passionate most passionate about but also that I know the most about and I think those two things are so crucial um, especially when you start writing I think you know later on like uh, for example at the moment I've written only about football but I'd love to write about other things at some point but I think when you're first starting out it's so helpful to have that that thing that kind of drags you through um, because I think there's two other things which are my other two top, top tips. One is about, you know, don't be afraid to get started with that writing. So, you know, whether you're someone who needs to plan everything out or you're someone who just wants to go for it, either way, at some point you're gonna have to start writing. Yes. And it doesn't matter if that first version of that story that you write isn't the best thing you've ever done or as good as you hoped it would be. The, the important thing is that you've got to the end of a story, or you, you know, you've got something down and you can make it better as you go along. Um, and the third one, sorry, I just ruined it, but um, is uh, don't be afraid to, uh, you know, get to the end, finish, finish what you've started. Because 
I think so many people get bogged down in the middle somewhere and lose track of what they're writing or run out of ideas, don't know where to go. But just get to that end, whatever it takes. And hopefully that passion and that knowledge are going to be really important to take you to that end. You get to the end, feel proud that you've got to the end and then think about ways that you can make your own work better. Because um, that's what that's what I do every day um, is I sit at my desk, get to the end of a piece of writing, think, oh, at least I got to the end. It's not as good as I hoped it would be, but now I can make it better. Well, fantastic, Matt. Well, on that note, we've reached the end. The final whistle has blown. So thank you very much to Matt Oldfield for an insight into the writing process. My pleasure. Good luck.